a sensible naturalism would start with the things that are part of what we can all agree are the basic fact uh, uh, furniture of the universe. Some of them will include abstract things like constitutions and Schrodinger equations and things like that. Whereas we're confident that there are tables and chairs, we're not as confident that there are uh, numbers and things like that. And that, that's sort of a, so that's, uh, now once, if one were to decide that numbers and uh, irrational numbers and square roots and innumerable infinites are part of the basic fabric of the universe, then it seems that you'll have trouble uh, with certain kinds of naturalism, in particular your kind of naturalism, because Clearly, such things don't look as if they're made up of uh, fermions and bosons. The problem for us naturalists, it's related to that other moose in the middle of the living room reason. The problem for us naturalists is to give a naturalistic account of meaning yeah. and foresight. Yeah. Okay? And the difference between you and me is my bet is that we're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. That we're going to discover that, na that meaning and foresight are just more overlay. Very useful, okay, perhaps indispensable given our culture and way of life, but without the kind of a relationship to the rest of science that would vindicate their reality. By reality, so, I'm, I'm trying to get at what kind of reality that is. I, I didn't, I, I want to get it exactly right. You said. And, and this is, of course, what the rest of this weekend is about, no, no, foresight I'm and, and meaning. I yeah. just wanted to get what you just said straight. Uh, so you're saying that meaning, that we're not going to be able to come up with a scientific uh, account of meaning uh, because... You didn't say why, I guess, but... but it's because... I've already talked enough, but uh, well, I could gesture at, say, the work of Quine. Okay. Or uh, the the work of Dennett on uh, uh, homunculi, um, there, uh, or Searle using it as a modus tollens. There's lots of arguments on the table about the difficulties associated with giving a naturalistic account of meaning, and it's one of the strongest bases on which the anti-naturalist mounts his and her opposition to naturalism. Right. But, but of course, we could acknowledge that without giving up naturalism, right? I mean, naturalism right. after all. Of course, naturalism is a program. Exactly. And this is one of the most important problems on the research program of naturalism. Right. But beyond that, I mean, that is, I would agree. But beyond that, I think we could, even if it turned out that a scientific account, I'm not saying that it will, but if it turned out that a scientific account of meaning uh, is impossible to human beings. It's inaccessible. It's epistemically inaccessible. We're just not going to get there. So what, right? That doesn't actually give any particularly good foundation to any rejection of naturalism, just that because it becomes an argument from, uh, argument from ignorance. It just says, oh, well, you guys can't That's do like it. That's like an argument that because we can't investigate the entire universe, we can't exclude the possibility that Santa Claus exists. Um, well, well strictly yes. speaking, that's true. <laughs> okay, fine. If that if that's your but standard you of proof, it's not part of science or naturalism. Okay. Huh. But we define know. naturalism or all. I mean, this whole meeting is about moving it forward, and it seems like you've already yeah. asked for like, definition of what it is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my my working definition is that naturalism is the idea that the, the natural world is all that exists. The world is not divided into separate realms that would in any useful way be called natural and supernatural. 